Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, my name is Josh and I'm currently a graduated college student who studied pre-med. Today we're gonna to be reacting to My Feet Are Killing Me, the worst case of toenail fungus ever seen. Let's get into it. Are you in pain right now, David? That foot's more pain than this one. That hurts like hell. And that's, uh, your nails are pressing yeah, against the correct, toes? Yeah, correct, probably, yeah. Okay. It's in nails and probably other little minor things, I guess. I don't know how you would medically term them. Right. But toes are definitely part of the issue. And David, you said it's been a while since, uh, you know, you've treated your feet or have someone examine them. Um, how long have you left the nails untreated? Gee, way too long, and I'm paying for it. So we haven't even seen the toes yet, but it's definitely tough to hear about a patient who, who has a lack of care for themselves, um, who hasn't seen a doctor either due to personal reasons, due to fear of, you know, whatever medicine might have to offer, um, or due to lack of costs and lack of ability to pay and the fear of going to debt for something like a procedure to remove toenails or fungus or get something worked on, but a lack of foot care. Um, can definitely cause problems when you're on your feet all the time, depending on what your job is, more or less. But um, yeah, due to a lot of medical reasons or a lot of personal reasons, a lack of, of medical care too during COVID has definitely been a problem. And so, I mean, doctors are seeing a lot more of a lot of more patients who are um, coming in to get care that hadn't been during the pandemic and for multiple different reasons and are now having an influx of patients due to the lack of medical care during those couple years of the pandemic. All right, David. When I removed David's socks, there was just flakes and flakes and flakes coming off of his feet. <laughs> Sorry, buddy, I know it's... Let me check your left foot also. All right, almost off. Just yank. Okay. Wow. I mean, I've seen, I've seen bad cases. This is the worst case of toenail fungus that I've seen. David's nails were so long that they were curling on top of each other and almost bridging together. His skin was flaking off. You could literally take little pieces of it off. It looked like a croissant. I will say I have noticed reacting to My Feet Are Killing Me and Dr. Pimple Popper, they love making food comparisons. So he's talking about a flaking foot from a toe fungus and he's comparing that to a croissant flake, um, which is kind of like Dr. Pimple Popper, which will pop a pimple or a cyst or whatever and compare it to like cottage cheese or butter or compare it to, you know, chicken or something like that for a, for like a lipoma or something like that. And I just noticed they love making food comparisons. So I think that's funny because a lot of people in other professions wouldn't do that. But I think it's funny because a lot of comparisons for medicine can be made to food. And so the flaking of a foot to the flaking of a croissant, I think is an interesting comparison to make. My brother have hemophilia. The danger with hemophilia is internal bleeding, the stuff that you can't see. It turns out that David has hemophilia. For a normal person, if you just cut your skin, our blood clots. In David's case, that cut can turn into a bigger issue and you can bleed and bleed and it won't stop. Hemophilia, depending on which factor you are, you're missing one of the proteins in your blood. Right. And that's what prevents the clotting. According to David and his brother, David unfortunately suffered several brain hemorrhages while growing up due to hemophilia that affected his cognitive ability. So the two most common forms of hemophilia are hemophilia A, the classic hemophilia, and hemophilia B, the Christmas disease. Hemophilia A is a lack of uh, clotting factor eight, and then hemophilia B is a lack or decrease of clotting factor nine. And so these are the most common, there are other ones as well, but you probably have one of these and that's when your blood just doesn't clot due to the lack of the protein or a decrease of that clotting factor. You left the nails untreated. Gee, way too long and I'm paying for it. I've just been going for so long. Yeah, it's been a while. And losing my mom, that just killed me. Yeah. So, at least now when we talk about her, it's in good memories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but she was wonderful. You know? Right. David was really close to his mother, and he really adored her. Five years ago, he lost his mother, and David had a hard time. And unfortunately, he stopped taking care of his feet. When somebody neglects their feet like this, uh, it can harbor infection. This can be a really serious matter. 
You have corns that are diving into the skin. Oh, I know. Feels like walking on landmines. <laughs> So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to carefully cut through all of the nails. Well, if you see me skyrocket through your ceiling, okay. you know that had to hurt. All right. Okay. okay. <laughs> I think it's good that you can have that sense of humor when talking about something as serious as this um, and talking about the loss of his mother when he was crying moments before um, in order to have that kind of relationship with your doctor and be comfortable enough to share and be open about that, which can obviously be part of the reason why maybe he stopped taking care of his feet if you were so close to somebody who passed away. Um, yeah, you can obviously go through hard times and hardships that, that take away from some of the other things you've been doing, like taking care of yourself and putting yourself first. Um, yeah, so it's really good to see kind of that sense of humor still being there, even though he was talking about like the loss of his mother and as well as the, the treatment and the pain that he might be dealing with um, during this procedure. David has hemophilia. So the biggest concern for me was not cutting David's foot. I'm gonna chip away at David's toenails. They're gonna be removed. I'm gonna file them down so it looks like a normal foot. Oh, oh, that one hurt. Yeah, that one's a bad one. A little bleeding there. Oh, right. I'm sorry. Somewhere along the line there, he got nicked. Oh, God. His skin tore when I was taking care of him. And that was because of years of his toes being stuck together. And uh, unfortunately, he started to bleed person with hemophilia, they will actually bleed out. Right, let's see how this looks. Good, we're looking good there. Thankfully, for everybody, David's foot stopped bleeding. I was so relieved. Well, just don't stop. Keep cutting until you get to the other side. Right. <laughs> ah, time out, time out, time out. So you would definitely have to use something bigger than a fingernail trimmer for giant thick toes like this, some, some medical grade equipment in order to remove these because you would not be able to get around that with a typical trimmer. That right there just came off your big toe. I can't even imagine walking around with that. I've learned to adapt and adjust. Yeah. The foot also has a callus going into the skin, which was causing corns. A corn is like a callus. A callus is very superficial. A corn actually pits and dives into the skin, creating a lot of pain. In David's case, his corns needed to be removed with my scalpel. That hurts. Ow. Yeah. yeah, that one's not going to be pleasant, David. All right, this is coming off nice. Ow, 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 ow. Yeah. So this was on the bottom of your foot. Yeah. David had one of the largest corns that I've ever seen. It was huge. The next step I want to dremel him down, there's going to be a lot of dust. OK. Ready to go? Yeah. A dremel is like a woodworking tool. That's going to really file David's nails down so they don't rub in his shoes. You can see in the slow motion clip, it was definitely toenail flakes and dead skin flying off up into the air. So it's definitely appropriate to have masks on for everybody in the room. So you're not breathing in whatever's flying up in the air from his feet. Um, especially, yeah, dead cells or, or toenail clipping shavings or, you know, something that's infected or some sort of fungus um, that could be flying around in the air. Um, using that Dremel, you can see he's trying to make it a normal looking toe. He's trying to take the biggest parts that he can off with those giant clippers and then file it down in order to make it look normal. So even though he might not have the giant toenails that he used to have, he can then shave them down so they're also not as thick um, and there's no trouble putting on like a sock or a shoe. You're doing good, bud. That was the key right there. <laughs> they're with me here, brother. I'm trying. Yep. You're doing awesome, man. Somewhere there is a foot we're still we're, searching uh, for. It. See we're now. seeing it, brother. You can see him now. The hard part's done. Now we're going to put your feet in a bath. We're going to soak them. We're going to get the rest of this dry skin off. OK. After we got all the toenails shaved down properly, I wanted to soak David's feet. This was a good step for us in the treatment process. Right now, I'm happy barefoot for a while. First time in probably a long time. You're happy, I'm happy. <laughs> David's goal was to fit in these great boots that he had. Here's the big moment. And 
He hasn't worn another pair of shoes for years. That one fits. Let's see the other one. You got it. We got it. Easy. Mission accomplished, oh, Doc. Good job. So when a patient has something so severe like that, you take the little victories. And so fitting into a pair of shoes that you really love when you weren't able to before is definitely a heartwarming moment for somebody like that going through this sort of procedure to just be able to put socks on without any pain and be able to walk without any pain and just to simply fit into a pair of shoes that you enjoy. It's, yeah, it's, it's really heartwarming to see even the little victories like that. I'm really excited to see how he's doing. Yo, David. Hey, Doc. How are those feet feeling? Pretty good. You've been through the ringer with these things. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna take off your socks. We're gonna see how it's doing. It's, it's very possible for someone to fall back into their old habits. But I'm taking off David's socks and shoes and I am so excited to see that his feet look amazing. Unbelievable. I mean, the, the transformation here is, is completely night and day. The progress is being made. We're on yeah. the right track, heading in the right direction. He's very confident. He's walking without pain, and that's all that I want. So that six-week transformation was absolutely incredible. Seeing the before and the after was an insane transformation. Looking at the, the fungus that was removed and all the calluses and the, you know, the whatever that may be removed from his feet, um, filed down and just make it look like a normal foot so he can walk without pain, so he can put socks on, so he can wear a pair of shoes that he enjoys. Um, from some something that's so simple as, as trimming them or using a hot bath or like a compress or something like that um, is definitely incredible to see. And uh, yeah, I hope obviously it stays that way. There are definitely personal reasons, like I was talking about earlier when he said the loss of his mother or COVID that can make it so you don't have as much interaction with a doctor and you think that you have some so, something that you might need to see a doctor for, but don't and you keep pushing that off because of whatever those reasons might be. And so it's awesome to see that even after six weeks, his feet are still looking normal because like he said, it, it's really easy to fall into old habits or simply just stop taking care of your feet because you didn't in the first place and thinking that a doctor would solve the entire problem whereas it falls on the patient after they leave that hospital on that visit. And so after seeing that doctor having to go home and having his brother, maybe himself, or whoever might else be in his life, having to keep up with him in order to make sure that he stayed on top of his feet is, is something that is challenging for some people, but it's awesome to see that he was actually able to do that. I am down to react to so many more My Feet Are Killing Me. There are so many incredible episodes that I've seen both on TV, but haven't reacted to on this channel and would love to. If you did enjoy it, drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel down below. Otherwise, I will see you all in the next one. Peace.